Hey guys, what's going on? It's Thrawn Gaming, and today I'm back with another Thrawn's Revenge Fleet Builder. So today was a special request from you guys in the comments. Um, one of you requested the Katana Fleet, which, in case you didn't know, is an entire fleet built up of... Not built up of... Comprised of black-coated Dreadnought-class heavy cruisers. And so we have those over here. Um... In Legends, it is uh, 200 Dreadnoughts. Obviously, I could not fit 200 Dreadnoughts in here, so I gave them a population of 200. So, collectively, if you look up there where my cursor just was, it says 6, so there's 33 of these, which is about 200. And we're going to be making these Katana fleets go against every single faction in the game. So, first off, we have the Katana fleet versus the New Republic. The New Republic has one Home 1 type MC-80, one MC-90, two MC-80 Liberties, and two Nebulas. Oh, they also have three Quasars. So, without further ado, let's start this battle. Alright, the Katana Fleet's already kind of moving forward, not sure why. Um, getting a little bit of lag due to the... Oh no, lag cleared up. I thought it was because of the number of... Uh, ships on the battlefield, but no, it doesn't look like it. Um, the Katana Dreadnoughts are interesting because they, they have better, um, they have better shields, but slightly less health than a normal Dreadnought, and their, their weapons and their speed are very different. Their, their speed isn't very different, but their speed is different enough that it makes it so that they're they're a little faster than normal dreadnoughts. Um, normal dreadnoughts have one concussion missile launcher, and these replace it with uh, laser cannon banks, and they also replace the turbo laser batteries in the normal dreadnoughts with some ion cannons. So that's just something for the dreadnought fleet. I'm not really sure what these dreadnoughts back here are doing. Um, they're not really supporting the rest of their their ships out here. Let's speed this up just a little bit so that some ships can start to go down and the lag gets a little less. Um, I mean, it looks like they're doing all right. One of the the first of the Katana fleet dreadnoughts have finally cracked. Um, let's see if there is... The Katana was the main dreadnought in control of all of them because their, their systems were slaved to one central... Um, one central jump system, and so the downfall of them was that some hive mind took over all of the um, inhabitants of the dreadnoughts, which caused them to jump to hyperspace to a random location, and they weren't found for a couple hundred years, if I remember correctly. Um, so yeah, now this katana dreadnought is almost dead. This one is getting worked on. It's about the same as that one. Um, this MC-90, though, is actually getting pounded pretty, pretty well. Um, home one type has taken a chunk of damage. Not too bad. Um, this MC-90 shields are about to crack. Um, this MC-80 has its, uh, shield overcharge ability on. Um, not 100% sure why the rest of the dreadnoughts back here are, are not moving up. Um, it's weird. They should be working as a group, but they're... They're just not. Um, yeah, they're, they're getting some more reinforcements, I guess, but... Uh, other than that, no, they're just... They're kind of doing their own thing. Let's speed this up just a little bit, see if we can get this MC-90 shields to crack. Um, yep, the shields finally did crack, and now they're actually starting to damage some of those hard points. Um... More Dreadnoughts coming in from back here, firing at the Home 1 type. Um, this MC- actually, why are, why are all these Dreadnoughts flying back here? They're not really gonna help out their fleet if they just keep- oops, there's camera- They're not really gonna help their fleet out if they just keep charging back here. Um, though the, they do still have a sizable amount of Dreadnoughts left, and they're making- Well, I was gonna say short work at this MC-90, but it's taken them a little bit, because they- they have a lot of ion weaponry. Well, no, they don't actually have too much. They, they only have two banks of ion weaponry, so that's not terrible. 
Um, they're a lot better at taking out shields than they are actual hard points. That's what makes them different from the original Dreadnoughts. Uh, the original Dreadnoughts were incredibly uh, well armed with turbo lasers. Uh, I don't believe they had a single laser cannon. Um, but these ones are refitted for extra speed, extra shield, and um, some anti-fighter support as well. Um, I don't even know if they're going to kill this MC-90. Um, they're targeting this Quasar, oddly enough. Um, that's not necessarily the smartest idea, I wouldn't say. Um, they are heavily targeting... Well, not really heavily targeting because the bulk of their force is back there. They are targeting this Home 1 class, and they've gotten about halfway through its shields, and they're about to actually crack this MC-80 shields. So that's, that's something for them, at least. Um, what are they hitting? Oh, they're hitting the turbo laser battery. Let's speed this up just a little bit so we can get more ships into battle. Alright, the rest of the Katana fleet is actually engaging. Um, well, I think the New Republic is gonna, gonna win. I'm not 100% sure. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm, I'm pretty sure the New Republic's gonna win. Because they still have the home one. They have both of their, um, the Nebulas. They have a badly damaged MC-90. They have about, mm, th three-fourths health, um, MC-80, another MC-80, and then two Quasar, no, three Quasars left. I thought they killed that one. Uh, no, they did not. Um, yeah, this is looking even worse for the Katana fleet. I mean, now they do have all their firepower focusing on the home one. Um, that's certainly good, but um, I just don't think they have the numbers or the firepower like they did at the beginning to actually take the New Republic on. Yeah, they're just kind of firing everywhere at once, and they're not actually pinning down one target. Um, yeah, they're not doing a whole lot here. Let's speed this up just so that we can watch them die a little faster. Um, yeah, this isn't looking, looking too great for them. They just have, they're, they just have too much ion weaponry. Maybe, actually, I'm, I'm not even sure if they have too much ion weaponry. I don't even think that's the problem. I think they, they're just, they're just probably underpowered, or their tactics that they used in this battle were just incredible for. Um, and I'm pretty sure it was the tactics that killed them in this battle, because they probably could have won if they'd, you know, engaged with all of their numbers, but they, they just did not. Um, I'll be back with the next fight. Alright guys, we're back. We have, uh, sorry, I cannot talk today. This time we have the Pentastar alignment with six Precursor Star Destroyers, three Venator class Star Destroyers, um, three Gladiator class Star Destroyers, and five Tartan Patrol Cruisers against the Dreadnought Katana Fleet. So, let's get this fight going. Um, all of the New Republic fighters just kind of blitzed, not New Republic, but the Katana Fleet fighters just blitzed forward. Um, I couldn't have done anything to stop that. Um, I I'm, I'm sorry that this might make it a little bit uneven because they're going to lose a lot of their fighters, but I, I could not do anything about it. They just, the fighters will not stand still. And oftentimes the Dreadnoughts will actually, well, not just the Dreadnoughts, but every fleet the ships in the lead will actually start going towards the enemy fleet without me even telling them to. So I'm, I'm sorry that the Katana fleet's wasting fighters, but I, I just I, I can't do anything about it. Um, I mean the fighters did take off some shield, but that in the long run won't do anything. Um, looks like the Katana fleet is holding off a little bit. Oh no 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 fast motion. That's that's a lag. It's lag and a half. Um, let's see here. How many fighter squadrons do these get? These get four, and then have ten in reserve. These get none. These get one and have one in reserve. Turn patrol cruisers, you don't have any, right? No, you don't. Gladiators, aren't you supposed to be a carrier? Yeah, it's supposed to be a carrier. Then why does it only have 
two squadrons available to it. That's really weird. Um, I think the lag probably won't be as bad. We can actually go into fast motion here. Um, these aren't on my side. Okay, they aren't. I just want to make sure, because I did that in one of my other videos. I think it was the, um, every faction tournament. I accidentally set the Empire to be controlled by me, and I did not mean to. And I was just trying to see if that was the case with this. But no, it is not. Um, the Catan fleet's actually going forward a little bit to engage with these precursors and Tartan patrol cruisers. Um, and some of these precursors are, if, if I'm even saying that right, are kind of getting into a weird formation, I guess. Um, this time, actually, the Katana fleet dreadnoughts look like they're coming forward with all of their numbers. That is, that's good to see. It's what we like to see. Um, let's see. The lag has actually stopped for the time being. Um, looks like their laser cannons are actually killing some of those TIE Fighters. That's good to see. Um, are these Tartan Patrol Cruisers losing shield? Yes, this one did lose shield. It is about to go down. Um, for those of you who don't know what a Tartan Patrol Cruiser is, they are essentially anti-fighter corvettes that were first uh, introduced in the original Vanilla Empire War. So these are these are the OG units, and they, they're they're pretty good in the Vanilla Empire War. Um, I tried to do a playthrough when I first started this channel, but uh, it got a corrupted save. So that seems to happen to a lot of our a lot of our uh, playthroughs. Well, not a lot of them, but that happened to the Separatist one, and that happened to that one. I'm really hoping it does not happen to this Thrawn's Revenge one, because I'm having a ton of fun playing. Um, it looks like the battle is in full swing. Uh, Katana Fleet definitely has a number of fighters. Um, I could swear there was only 33 Dreadnoughts, but, and each carries one fighter squadron, but this looks way more than 33. Um, yeah. Some of these Dreadnoughts are going down. This Gladiator class is getting a little too close to the fleet. Um, this Venator is too... Um, I think, since the Katana Fleet pushed with all of their numbers, I think the Katana Fleet might actually win this one. That was a weird sound. Two subsystems at the same time. It was like, a massive ear rate. It speeds up just a little bit. Um, no, that's a too laggy. Um, yeah, the, the Katana Fleet are actually doing it this time. Because they, they still have numbers back here, and I mean... The ones up here are kind of, they're tanking damage, they're not actually getting killed too badly. Um, this gladiator's getting hit pretty hard. Um, this precursor's getting hit pretty hard. That, those two katana dreadnoughts are dying out. Um, this precursor's getting a little too close, because now it just, uh, awoken, not awoken, it just awoke the back lines, because the back lines were sitting there doing nothing, and then it got way too close, and then activated all of them. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's screwed. Um, this gladiator class is still alive, I can't believe it. Not anymore. Um, this precursor is going down pretty quickly. This venator is getting worked on, this precursor is taking a lot of damage. This one's okay, this one's okay, and this one's okay. Oh, they still have a Tartan Patrol Cruiser. Not by much, because it has almost no health, but that's okay. Um, yeah, I think the Katana Fleet has this one in the bag, for sure. Um, and the unit, the unit caps were uh, were equivalent, so maybe the Katana Fleet decided that it was, you know, it, it was time to show the other factions who's boss. Because um, last fight, they definitely did not. That last fight was pitiful. Um, though it is good to see that they can actually coordinate all their firepower on one target. Um, it, it, it looks pretty cool. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I think Cory Luzes did an amazing job with this mod. I mean, just, just look at the models. Just that, that texture, though. It looks amazing. Um, but back to the fight. This precursor is about to lose its engines. It's about to lose pretty much all of its subsystems and its life. Um, all of the Dreadnoughts are actually activated and fighting. 
Wow, that cursor just zoomed over here. This thing must have more speed than I thought it did. Yeah, 3.25 speed, 3.0 speed. Oh, they're actually faster than Dreadnoughts. Did something just hyperspace out? Um, what? I swear I just heard something emergency retreat. Mm, that might have just been me. Um, this precursor is slowly falling to the New Republic. Well, I have it set to the New Republic, but to these uh, X-Wing fighters. Um, does it have any laser cannons? To yeah, okay, it has laser cannons to fight back with, so it can shoot those down. But it's got a lot of dreadnoughts closing in on it, and I don't think it's going to live for much longer. Um, this It might get one more kill, but it's not going to survive for much longer. Um, actually, this precursor might land this kill. Um, if it didn't get out of range... No, it got out of range. Uh, yeah. Everything's pretty much dying out real easily. Um, let's just watch as this last precursor goes down. This one over here goes down. And that should be it. There we go. Alright. Well, they still have tons of dreadnoughts left. That was... They did much better than the last fight. Um, yeah, I'll be back with the next fight. Alright guys, I'm back with the next battle. It is the Empire of the Hand versus the Katana Fleet. So the Katana Fleet has the same numbers as always. The Empire of the Hand have two of these Phalanx Destroyers. Two Ascendancy Class Star Destroyers. Two of these little... Baumu, I think they're called. Um, they're repair ships. Um, three of these Ormos Class Carriers. Five of these Rokia... Um, gunboats, I think, and then five of these Furo class anti-starfighter, no, wait, no, they're not anti-starfighter, they're just picket cruisers, so let's start it, um, and always, you know, the fighters just blitz on forward, and that's what the Katana fleet seems bent on doing, um, I think... I'm pretty sure these things have... No, they have turbo lasers, but do any of them have laser cannons? Or do any of them just have normal maser cannons? No, they're just mega masers. Um, yeah, I wonder if mega masers, like just the normal mega masers, are the same thing as turbo lasers? Mm, that'd be interesting to see, but these... Holy crap, these Rokia-class gunships have some range to them. I need to start building these in the Empire of the War campaign. Not Empire of the War. Empire at War campaign. Uh, the Thrawn's Revenge one that we're doing right now. These things would be a great help. I could just park them in the back lines and they could be our little artillery units. Um, this little Furo class is getting pretty decimated. Um, though the same thing can be said for that Katana Fleet Dreadnought. Um, oh yeah, you can hear the... Baumu things actually healing each other um, from the damage. I'm just not sure who they're healing. Um, yeah, I'm not 100% sure who they're healing. Is that just a single? Yeah, this 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 squadron is it's one Howl Runner. That is one little brave Howl Runner. Um, that Baumu better get out of the line of fire. It's gonna get torn apart. Yeah, who is it? Who is it repairing? Because nobody's taking hull damage, and I can hear it repairing. I'm not... Does it... Does it replenish shields, maybe? Not 100% sure. Oh, now the rest of the Katana fleet's actually moving in. This is like the time of the New Republic, except they're actually... They're actually putting all of their units forward. They're just... It's kind of a slow trickle, but they're... I mean, they're doing it. Um... These Phalanx Destroyers, they... They have a lot of health, but their damage is even more impressive. Um, they're like Syndic Star Destroyers on steroids. But with less health. With less health. They're just... They're good. It's just you can't let them sit in the line, like, line of fire for too long. Or else they'll just get disintegrated. Um, it seems like the Empire of the Hand is absolutely steamrolling the Katana Fleet. 
I think the only ships they've lost are maybe a couple of these Feroth class. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Had to burp real quick. Um, I think the only things they've lost are a few. No, just a couple of the Feroth class. What the? Excuse me? Did one of their... What? Did one of their ships just... Which ship just hyperspaced out? Was it a Furo class? That's really confusing. They might have just screwed themselves over. Yeah, because now the rest of the Katana fleet's actually coming in. Um, yeah, they might have just screwed themselves. That was really not smart. Unless it was a really terrible ship, then that really doesn't matter. Um, yeah, it looks like all the big ships are still here. They've got the Ascendancies, the Phalanxes. Uh, they got most of these... Uh, Rokia ones, so I think they should be okay. And the... Jeez. The amount of firepower that's being targeting the Sinsi is just... It's amazing. I love how you can see the little ping of the shields, you know? It's really cool. They did a great job making Empire War, but the modding community, it's, it's just amazing what they can produce. Um... Oh, this is about to die. Um, and there it goes. Um, are they breaking any sh Yeah, they broke the Sensei class shields. Um, they're kind of cycling units out, but I'm not... I, I think either side could still win this one. Sorry, just, I swear, I cannot talk today. Like, I'm having burping, I'm, like, mispronouncing things, voice cracking. I just cannot, cannot do it today. Um... They are breaking this phalanx of shields. If they could destroy this phalanx, that would be an enormous help to them. Because these phalanx destroyers have so much firepower. Um, yeah, they're actually tearing into both of them. And this ascendancy at the same time. Yeah, I think the Katana fleet might have this. Just with the sheer number of ships plus the turrets that are on board each ship. I, I think they might have this one. They're about to down this Ascendancy class. Um, do Ascendancy class? Uh, the Ascendancy class hits hard, but they still... The Phalanx still has more weapons. Why are all of these things hard points damaged? If you hit the hull of something hard enough, can you damage it that badly? Or did the Katana Fleet Dreadnoughts have some ability that I just didn't know about? Weird. They do have power to uh, weapons, which is really helpful. That's always, you know, that's always welcome. Um, yeah, I think the Katana Fleet's have this one. Let's speed this up just a little bit. Um, this Phalanx is about to go down. Um, the, the Empire of the Hand is damaging so many of these Katana Fleet Dreadnoughts. Um, this Phalanx is about to go down. Um, there it goes. This Ascendancy class back here is getting targeted. Um, I mean, they're killing more of these Dreadnoughts, but I think the Katana Fleet has it, because combined, I think all their firepower probably could take them down. Yeah. Yeah, they just have too many hard points for them not to be, not to be taken down. Um, I mean, they have too many hard points to be taken down. Um, this Ascendancy class is about to go down. Um, this phalanx is about to go down, and the last Starfighter Squadrons are getting killed off. Um, it's just a matter of time. And, there we go. The second win for the Katana Fleet. I will be back with the next matchup. Alright guys, we're back with the next battle. It is the Hapes Consortium, or Consortium, or however you say that versus the Katana Fleet. So, Katana Fleet has the same numbers as always. Um, the Hapes have five of these Star Homes, uh, seven Battle Dragons, five Nova Cruisers, and five Beta Cruisers. And, again, I could not make them stay still, so the majority of their fighters are going to be over here, and they're already coming, so... Sorry about that in advance. Um, let's go ahead and get the battle started. And the lag is real. Uh, beta cruisers, what is your... What are your armaments? Um, 
Turbo lasers, ion cannons, concussion missiles. Oh, they're really good at shooting down big ships, not starfighters. Interesting. What are you good at? Turbo lasers. Okay, you can shoot down little ships. Um, you can't shoot down little ships. Can you shoot down little ships? Mm, no. So the only ships that have laser cannons that are actually equipped to fight starfighters are the star homes. Interesting. It's going to be an interesting battle since they both have a lot of ships to go against each other. Um, it'll, it'll just be an interesting battle altogether. And I can't go in fast motion yet because it would just look terrible because of all the lag. Um, are the dreadnoughts even taking damage? Yeah, they are. Um, they're hitting the star homes. They're, they're doing some damage. I mean, how much health did these things have? They have about Dreadnought health. Maybe a little over. Um, they definitely don't have the speed or the acceleration turn radius. Um, but they have more squadrons of fighters. Um, and their health and shield are better, as I said. So Let's see who wins this battle. And interestingly enough, the Hapes don't have a single ship with hard points. So meaning any damage you do is dealt to the entire ship, which I feel is a lot easier in battle. You can just order your, your units to fire on one ship and any excess damage doesn't like, you know, just, just slam into the place where that previous hard point was and deal absolutely no damage. It actually counts for something. So, I, I do like that. Um, the Hapes are kind of making a defensive perimeter around their battle dragons, which is interesting. It's an interesting tactic. Um, they've got one up here as like a scout. Um, yeah. And we've got the dreadnoughts down here, uh, just kind of getting shredded. Uh, beta cruisers. Beta cruisers pack a punch. They've got three turbo lasers, four medium triple ion cannons, and three concussion missiles. These things can deal some serious shield damage. Um, yeah, the hapes are known for dealing a lot of ion damage. Um, the turbo laser technology is not incredible because they're well actually the turbo laser technology it takes I think twice as long to recharge a turbo laser as a normal like a hape a hape and turbo laser takes twice as long to recharge as a non hape and turbo laser. Which is interesting. How did these star homes get all the way up here? I didn't even I apparently wasn't paying attention because I didn't see them drift that far. But they're actually, they're killing it, sort of. Now that I take a look at their health, I mean, they're doing it. They've got the fighter spirit. Yeah, they've definitely got fighter superiority for it. Um, can't even pronounce that right. Um, these fighters, I can't even see what they are. Um, but I, I do know these. the fighters are incredible. Um, they... They're much better than your average uh, faction fighter. Um, they, their bombers especially, they have tons of missiles. The bombers are the red ones. So if we can, if we watch and see, hold on a second. I just, I want to see if we can find a bombing run somewhere. Um, I don't think it's gonna. Oh, yep. See, those are their missiles they shoot. These things are huge, and it's, you know, in Thrawn's Revenge where bombs can't pierce shields, the Hapes have an, a terribly well-balanced faction because their um, all their ships excel at ion capabilities, which leaves their hole open to bombers and fighters, which they have plenty of. So I think that's just... The, the Hapes are a pretty good faction in this game. Um, for being a minor unplayable faction, I think Corridus is doing an, an amazing job designing them. Um, yeah, let's see here. Um, got a dreadnought came all the way down here, stupidly. Um, right now I think it's pretty much anybody's fight. Um, yeah, I think either side could win because both sides are fairly even. Um, yeah. The thing I do like about the battle dragons is the fact that once they've destroyed a subsystem, 
their weapons fire so quickly, they can switch subsystems with such ease that they can almost spray one continuous stream into a ship and just like buzz all over the subsystems and it just it just takes the entire ship out. Like let's let's see how, how quickly they could take out a subsystem. If they can hit it. Okay, took that one out, and then now it's actually starting damage on that one. Yup, and then that one. Yeah, see, they can actually they can hit subsystems so quickly. Um, and they can apparently take on four dreadnoughts at the same time. Well, isn't that something? Um, yeah, I think the the Hapes probably have this one in the bag. Yeah, they've they've just got so many fighters and so many ships. I mean, look at that. Look at that barrage of those missiles. It's insane. And this battle dragon's finally peeling off of its fight at 1v4 with dreadnoughts. Um, even their beta cruisers, their weakest ship, are tanking damage. And that's ion damage too, which is meant to pierce their shields, and it has shields left. So that th this fight really says something about the Hapes Consortium. Um, now let's see how fast the shields melt. That, that is just, it's incredible how fast they can kill a ship. And now it's just, it's just about clean up. Um, this dreadnought's about to go down. The thing I like about these dreadnoughts is the fact that they will cycle their ships out until they're ready for the damaged ships to actually come back in. Because as you can see back here, they have all damaged ships. And then up here, back whenever the, it was still a fight, they had the non-damaged ships, which is... It, they actually use tactics, and I like that. That's a good feature. Alright, let's just watch the rest of these Dreadnought's hopes and dreams die. And that was the end of the battle. The Hapes kind of swept them. I mean, they have all of their battle dragons left. They didn't get a single kill. On the battle dragons, they killed two star homes. Um, they m probably killed some of the Nova cruisers. There's one, two, three. Okay, they killed two Nova cruisers and one Beta, one Beta cruiser. Wow. All right, let's see if they can do better in the next match. All right, guys, we're back with the next battle. So, this time it is the Greater Maldrude versus the Katana Fleet. I am still spawning units in, and I decided to start this battle early with the units still spawning because both sides are kind of inching closer to each other, and I just wanted it to be a fair fight. So, on the Greater Maldrude side, they have six Recusant or Recusant Destroyers, two of these Invincible Class Dreadnoughts, three Bulwark Mark I, oh no, four Bulwark Mark Ones, and five of these CC interdictors. So, let's start the match. And oh my good god, I didn't expect that to be that big of an explosion. Um, the Katana Dreadnoughts are still spawning. Yeah. Well. Um. Last Dreadnought's about to spawn in. Um, Greater Maldrud is. I, I will say, they, they are a good faction. And they have some very powerful units. I mean, for example, the Invincible class d uh, Dreadnought, it has 12 heavy dual turbo lasers. That's it's practically unheard of, and that can absolutely melt. It can absolutely melt any ship that gets within its sights, including super capital, like destroyers and stuff. Um, the Bulwarks, they have, well, they have heavy turbo lasers and heavy ion cannons, so they can hit hard per shot. They just have a lot of uh, shots they can take. Where one of them just emergency retreated. I saw that right, didn't I? Or did it just did it just do a, a weird twirly twirl? Wait, one, two, three, four, five. No, it it just did a twirly twirl. Um, the rest of the Katana fleet is deciding they're gonna come forward and actually fight. Um, this dreadnought's actually taking some damage. It's got some. Greater Maldred has some tanky ships. I did not put the Bulwark Mark III in. But that ship has some health to it. Let's see. Bulwark Mark III. It has almost super capital health and shields, 13 heavy turbo lasers, and 6 heavy ion cannons. 
and the turbo lasers fire once every second. I mean, the Invincible class Dreadnoughts, they only fire once every five seconds. So, I mean, that's... That's something to say about the Mark III. Um... Oops, no. Bad camera. It's a bad camera. Um... Well... There is still some significant lag, I think, due to the just amount of fighters that are on the battlefield. Um... These things are pretty good anti-fighter ships. I just wanted to see if they had any ships that could kill off all the fighter spam that's going on. And, yeah, the CC interdictors actually can. Um... Let's see here. Yeah, they... The Dreadnoughts are... They're taking some damage, but they're about to destroy this Invincible class, which will take a sizable chunk of the Greater Maldrude's damage away. Um... Because those heavy turbolasers hit hard. Um... The Dreadnought fleet has pretty much confined itself to this one line. Oh, no, no, no. Which is probably a good tactic, because they can all cover each other and can actually support everybody. So that's, that's good that they're actually deciding to use some good tactics. Um, I feel like after... Because I, I just, I see the ion shots hitting the hole but dealing no damage. I feel like after the shields break, the ion shots should deal some, like, maybe electrical damage or something. Maybe stop the ship in its tracks or reduce its firepower. Oh, well, there goes one of those invincible classes. Um, that one's shields broken. But I feel like the ion damage should still do something. Because in Star Wars, you know, whenever a ship gets hit with an ion blast, it's just dead in the water. So I feel like some something along those lines should happen with these. Um, but that, that's just my opinion. Um, this invincible class dreadnought's got a shield down. This one is, this bulwark mark one is taking a beating. Um, this dreadnought is foolishly pushing into greater maltreat territory oddly, and as I like to see, they're actually pushing their wounded back and cycling them out. That's what I like to see. Alright, this one's about to go down. Yeah, the... I think the Katana fleet has this one. I mean, they've taken out two of the... two of the Bulwarks, one of the Invincible classes, and they're badly damaging the Recusants, or Recusants, or whatever. Um, this Recusant's about to go down... Um, and now it's dead. Okay. Um, while I was looking away, one of their bulwarks died. Um, the other one's getting pounded. Um, this invincible class, oddly enough, they're not really touching it, aside from the fact that they're doing bombing runs with their fighters. Um, they're actually focusing their firepower on one ship and actually hitting multiple subsystems at a time. We like to see these tactics. It's what we like to see. Um, after this bulwark goes down, I suspect they'll be moving on to either this Recusant or that Invincible class. I would go for the Invincible class, personally, because it just that's such a big chunk of their firepower. And that looks like... Well, no, actually, they're going after the Greater Maldred's, uh fighters, oddly enough. Um... They're almost done with the fighters. I don't think they have very many left. Um, they've got a couple Y-Wing squadrons left. Z-95 squadron. And then whatever this is. Is that a K-Wing? Yeah, that's a K-Wing. It looks like a K-Wing at least. Um, well, I think they're actually doing what I thought they should have done. They're actually going after the Invincible class. Or, mm, no, they're actually going after the CC uh, Interdictor. Oh, those ion shots actually do damage. It's just not a lot. I didn't know that. Um, looks like they, let's get a fast motion. Um, looks like they are focusing firepower on, not really sure. Like, they're putting some of their firepower into this recusant, but most of the other ships are just kind of sitting around doing nothing. Um, let's go out of fast motion there. Um, it seems like this side's hitting this Recusant, this side's hitting that Recusant. They're kind of dividing their firepower, but they're actually being smart about it. So they're not, uh, allowing the opponents to have shield regen. Um, the, this, whatever it's called, Invincible Class. I swear, I, my, my brain is just, it's just gone today. 
Um, this invincible class is taking more damage. It's also actually hitting these dreadnoughts pretty hard. I think this dreadnought's about to go down from all those volleys of missiles. God, voice cracks, I swear. Um, and there it goes. All right. Uh, this dreadnought's probably about to die soon. That one is too. We did take out a recusant. Um, this recusant's about to go down. They're hitting multiple hard points. This recusant's actually getting hit too. Um, invincible class is getting hit from the sides. These invincible classes, they look cool. But they also, I feel like they look like just giant missiles in space. It's interesting. It's interesting the way they're designed. Um, this recusant's about to go down. And that should be the last of the- no, there's one more recusant. Um, let's speed this up just a little bit. And this recusant's getting melted. And it's down, and now this invincible class is just gonna get shredded. Um, doesn't have many hard points left to actually hit back with. And there it goes. It's the last K-Wing squadron. Um, it's probably not gonna survive for too long. Did I just see a shield bubble pop out around that? Um, yeah, that K-Wing's not gonna do anything. Uh, I will be right back with the next matchup. Alright guys, we're back with the next battle. It is the Empire versus the Katana Fleet. Um, I'm going to have to start spawning the units in right now, um, because I spawned about half the units in, and they're already running towards the Empire, so yeah, I just can't do anything about that, so let's start the battle, and then I will keep producing units for the Katana Fleet. Complete. Upgrade mm. complete. That's about 15, I Upgrade think. Upgrade complete. Upgrade complete. Upgrade right. complete. Upgrade in progress. 20. Wait, hold on a second. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, yeah, that is 20. Upgrade complete. Yep, let's not go in fast motion. That is a lot of lag. Alright, for the Empire side, they have one Tector, two Imperial 2-class Star Destroyers, um, three v Victory 1s, and two Acclimator 2s. Oh, and five Lancer Frigates. Upgrade complete. Upgrade in progress. Alright. Do one of them just hyperspace out? I really... That sound that they make, I swear, it sounds like they're hyperspacing out. It sounds so much like it. Upgrade complete. Upgrade. Alright, that's progress. the end of the Katana Fleet Dreadnoughts that they will Upgrade be getting. Complete. Um, they are really hammering this Tector. Um, and for some reason, complete. Tectors are less population Upgrade than a Victory complete. 2. It's really weird. Upgrade I feel like they complete. should have more since they're Upgrade better armed, complete. but that is not the case. Alright. So now the Katana Fleet has all of their ships that they are going to get. Um, and they have almost pierced this Tector's shields, and they did. Um, Katana Fleet's looking... Eh, right now. Like, they're... They're not using all of their firepower. I mean, granted, they probably couldn't because they didn't have all the ships in because they just started blitzing the Empire right away. Um, yeah, they should be working together more. Which is what they're supposed to be known for, at least. You know, slave systems and all. Um, but that is not what they're doing right now. Um, my hope is that they're at least going to start shooting at these uh, ISDs instead of just shooting at the TIE Fighters all the time, because that is not useful and not helpful at all, in the least. Um, well, it seems that they've cracked the shields on this ISD, too. Um, have they cracked the shields on any of these other things? No, they're getting close to this this one actually being cracked. And they're taking this Tector down slowly. Um, I say slowly because it is taking forever. Um, this ISD-2 is almost... Well, actually, they're making significant progress on the ISDs. Interesting. Oh, X-Wings have concussion... Rockets? I didn't know if they had concussion... Uh, not rockets, missiles. I didn't know they had concussion missiles. That's interesting. 
We're good at taking fighters out. I'll give him that. Um, let's speed some just a little bit. Yeah, one of the one of the dreadnoughts just hyperspaced out. Why? Why? Um. All right. Oh well, they cracked the shields on this victory. They're just all over the place in terms of targets right now. I it confuses me so much. Um, after they take this ISD down, they should have the firepower to start taking the rest of these ships out. Um, they're killing this victory class. And they're not doing a crap ton of damage to it, but, I mean, they're, they're getting it. I swear, d did I just see another, another, vi not victory class, dreadnought jump into hyperspace? I wish there was a way to turn off those abilities during, uh during fights like this where the you know simulations where you're just trying to see who will win yeah i keep hearing them and i swear i keep seeing them jump um but anyway this isd1 is about to go down all right it's down and at very like the literally exact same time that victory one just went down um oddly enough they're concentrating a lot of their firepower on this victory rather than protectors weird. Um, these X-Wings over here are actually getting work done with this victory. Um, it's an interesting move because this thing has light turbo lasers, so it c actually can hit the X-Wings. So it's an interesting choice. Um, they're actually coordinating all their firepower onto the victory class, so I they're actually doing pretty well for themselves. It's going to fast motion here so we can actually see some work getting done. And this victory is about to collapse. Yes, there it goes. Um, now they're splitting their firepower. Um, they are now targeting <laughs> this one skip ray blast boat, and they do end up chewing it to pieces. Um, their X-Wings and some of the Dreadnoughts are hammering that ISD, while some of the other Dreadnoughts are hammering this Tector. Um, this victory class has been quite passive throughout this battle, and oddly enough, I have not seen it launch... I've not seen any Victory class launch any concussion missiles. Weird. Oh, no, never mind. As soon as I say that. But at the exact second I say that, it launches concussion missiles. Um, well, this Tector's about to go down, and that's it for the Tector. Um, honestly, I think the Katana fleet could have this. They just have to destroy these Octopal. Uh, I and like really slow speaking today. They just have to destroy these octop turbo lasers because these things hit hard. Um, I mean, they do have the fighter amounts to do this. Um, they're just gonna have to take this acclimator down because it has some anti-starfighter weapons and that is not very good. Um, there's still two dreadnoughts back here and they're not even really getting engaged. I think they're they were the ones that they were cycling out because, as as I've said before, I've noticed that the Katan dreadnoughts in particular um, are really good at cycling out wounded units, which is quite impressive because you rarely see the AI actually do that. Um, let's speed this up just a little bit so this ISD can collapse. Um, there goes that Octavel turbo laser and that one at the same time, and it's dead. Alright, they've cracked the shields on this victory that had been passively staying behind. This acclimator has now turned on its uh, maximum firepower and is now actually nailing quite a few of these X-Wings. That's surprising because it has turbo lasers and not and not laser cannons. Um Dreadnoughts are almost done with this victory class. And it's dead. Um Wow. The Catan fleet did not win by a ton, it's just they had so many fighters, it was almost unfair. Um, yeah, this Ac Acclimator's about to go down pretty soon. Is this victory at least going to get one more kill? No, I don't think so. I would say the victory is in the Dreadnoughts. Without fighters, I believe a victory would win, just because of their fire output. Um, though that accuracy from that victory one is not being amazing. Um, because those concussion missiles hit hard. Um, 
Let's watch the rest of these fighters and the remaining Katana Dreadnoughts mop up this victory. Will it get one last kill? Will it get one last kill? Nope. It did not. Alright, well, that is the end of the Empire versus the Catan Fleet. I will be back with the last battle. Alright guys, we are back with the last battle. And this one is kind of special. It is the... Nor a fleet of normal Dreadnoughts versus the Katana Fleet. Um, I just wanted to do this so that we could see if Katana Fleet Dreadnoughts were better than normal Dreadnoughts. And... Yeah, um, the Katana Fleet's still spawning in because a cloud of TIE Fighters is heading for them and X-Wings are heading for them, and I just felt like I should probably start it so that they didn't stay over here and their fighters stayed over there. So, I'll start it and Upgrade let's get this going. Um, why is it not Upgrade starting? Oh, it's because I didn't click the little thing. Okay, there we go. As all of the TIE Fighters just start flaming. Upgrade complete. Oh yeah, these Dreadnoughts. These, okay, so the difference between the Dreadnoughts are... The Dreadnoughts have, I believe, less health, but more shields. Um... What is Katana Fleet? Um... Yes, the Katana Fleet has more... More health. And... Wait, wait, what? Oh, no, no, no. The Dreadnoughts have more health by 5, and the Katana Fleet have more shield by 10, by, no, by 10, by uh, 200. Um, I believe their speed are the exact same. No, Katana Fleet's speed is better. Um, is their acceleration better? No, the Katana Fleet's speed is the only thing that's better. Oh, no, the Katana Fleet are faster and they turn faster. Um... They have the same amount of squadrons, I believe. Uh, yes. Uh, the Dreadnoughts have two heavy dual turbo lasers, uh, two light turbo lasers, two light quad laser cannons, and a concussion missile launcher. While the Dreadnoughts have two heavy du- I can't speak today, let me start over. Uh, two heavy dual turbo lasers, two medium ion cannons, two heavy laser cannons, and two quad light laser cannons. So, there's that. Um, will the Katana Fleet actually engage the normal Dreadnought Fleet? Yes, it looks like they're actually going to. And the reason I spread them out so far is because I was afraid that whenever I started the battle, uh, one of the factions would start racing towards the other. Um, we saw that with the fighters, but we didn't see that with the Dreadnoughts, so that was, that was good. Um, how did they just fire off, like, a side shot like that? That was... I've never seen that before. Interesting. Alright, let's skip forward. I will probably cut this out of the video until they actually engage each other so that it's not boring watching them race towards one another. So I'll see you whenever some action happens. All right, for shots have been fired. So let's see who will win in this battle. Um, it looks like three dreadnoughts, normal dreadnoughts, concentrating fire on one of these is doing about as much damage as one dreadnought shooting at a normal dreadnought, which is interesting. Um, I don't know if that says something about the Katana Fleet shields or the normal dreadnoughts firepower, but that's it's interesting. Um, I think the first Dreadnought that is going to go down will be long to the Katana Fleet, maybe? Um, 
Yeah, I think so. Katan Fleet has two hard points left. This one has like four. Yep, one hard point left. And the first death was a Katan Fleet. Which, oh, is closely followed by a second Katan Fleet Dreadnought. Interesting. Alright, well, the rest of the Katana fleet should be engaging. No? No, it looks like most of the Dreadnoughts uh, are just staying behind. Interesting. Katana fleet just got their first kill, I do believe, and they're about to fall off with a second. Um, I can barely see the shots being fired. I think the Katana fleet's using their laser cannons mostly. Um... Yeah. All right, let's get that out of here. I don't want that being shot at. Because that's just a unit spawner, and sometimes they'll actually choose to shoot at that. And not, you know, the enemies. There we go. Now the battlefield's clear of that. Um, I feel like the Dreadnoughts themselves, not the Katana Fleet ones, have more capability of going up against other capital ships. And then the Katana Fleet are better as, like, anti-fighter support, I feel because this has more turbo lasers and it has concussion missiles while this one has ion cannons and a lot of laser cannons so it's good for anti-fighter support but it's also good for knocking out you know big capital ship shields so that's just that's just my take on the differentiation between the two um there's another katana fleet dreadnought dead this one's about to lead to another normal dreadnought death Oh, wow, the, uh, I didn't realize these were actually Katana Fleet Dreadnoughts. They pushed up really, really close. Um, maybe that's a good thing? I don't know. But, I will say the Katana Fleet has a lot more fighters than the normal Dreadnought Fleet does, because the normal Dreadnought Fleet does not have any left. Um, there's about to, uh, another Dreadnought. Okay, that Dreadnought just went down which will closely be followed by this one. Um, actually, I know nor the normal Dreadnoughts are meant for capital ship combat, but I think the Katana Fleet might actually win this. Because I'm seeing a lot more Katana Fleet Dreadnoughts go down than I am actual Dreadnoughts. It's really interesting. I, I thought the Katana Fleet would win at first, but then looking at the stats, I then thought the normal Dreadnoughts would win. Though, of course, the normal Dreadnoughts do have a lot of units left still. Um, and they're actually pushing like they should, you know, in large groups, large numbers, stuff like that. Um, and the... Uh, they don't... They're actually cycling units, and they still have a little reserve back here. Um, the Katana Fleet, on the other hand, is not bringing a lot of their units up. They're staying congregated back here. Um, but they do still have X-Wings left, so that's, that's something for them. Um, I just wish the normal Katan Dreadnoughts, um, had some of their Ion Cannons replaced with Turbo Lasers, cause they just, I mean, they're not in exceptional against actual capital ships, aside from the fact that they can deal shield damage. Why is the camera being weird? And then as I say that, they just absolutely annihilate another Dreadnought. Um, let's see here. How, how fast do they kill other Dreadnoughts? Where is most of the fire being coordinated here? On this Dreadnought, okay. How fast does this Dreadnought go down? You know what, it goes down, it goes down pretty fast. I'll, I'll stop talking crap about the Ion Cannons on, a norm, on the Katan Fleet Dreadnoughts. Um, it's interesting that the normal Dreadnoughts turn almost like a like a grayish white whenever they die. I wonder why that is. Um, and I feel like the, almost the the normal dread the normal dreadnoughts feel more like a a dark color than the katana ones do because the katanas are supposed to be like dark blue plated dreadnoughts because they were part of a they, they were like an experimental fleet part of, um, I believe some of them were used in the Outbound Flight project that was meant to map the galaxy, which inevitably, uh, failed because it was destroyed by, um, the combined might of Thrawn and a Separatist fleet, 
because he didn't want them finding the Yusun Vong out in the unknown regions and endangering the rest of the galaxy. Um, so the Catan fleet really, well, most of it never really got to see uh, use. But, well, actually, I say that and then remember that Thrawn used a lot of them in his campaign against the New Republic, so. Because um, he stole, I think it was 174, somewhere around there, Dreadnoughts, and used them um, in his campaign because he fitted them um, with clone troopers. Not the Fed genome, probably, but he put clone troopers inside of them because he had so many Dreadnoughts and did not have the crew requirements for said Dreadnoughts. Um, so he just started cloning a bunch of bunch of people, and he was like, well, that's gonna be my, my fix for this. Um, it looks like the Dreadnoughts, the normal Dreadnoughts, at least, do not have any more reserves. Um, they only have this one group up here. Um, Katana Fleet don't have any other reserves either. Um, I'm, it's looking like the Dreadnoughts are actually gonna win, because they are, they're moving, you know, in force, and the normal Catan fleet is not actually defending and focusing a lot of their firepower on, I say that and they're absolutely melting one of these dreadnoughts, um, I'm just gonna shut up, I, I'm not sure who's gonna win, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. Fast motion, fast forward or whatever, and a lot of katana dreadnoughts are being destroyed. Um, that is to say that the normal dreadnoughts aren't being destroyed, because they definitely are, um, and a lot of them are heavily damaged. Um, but I don't think the katana fleet can do it today. I just don't think they have it in them, or they have the numbers to even do it. Yeah, the Katana fleet, I, I think they're, they're lost ships today. The Empire has, has probably officially wiped out the Katana fleet, though at considerable losses to their own ships. Yeah. And this is the last ship from the Katana fleet. And there she goes. That was a cool battle. I like that one. Um, I feel like it was fairly even, because um, as you can see, a lot of these dreadnoughts here were actually fairly badly damaged. Even the ones that still have shields were pretty damaged, so I think that was a pretty good fight. Um, if you guys want to see more battles like this, just comment down below. I'd love to make them, because this one was fun to make, as always. Um, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, the notification bell, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.